I got to ask first about the um, lack of a hybrid here, especially since, you know, we're awaiting the F-150 Lightning and there are a lot of other, you know, the same big platform could be used as a, a, for a hybrid or, or an electric vehicle. Why not with the Navigator? Well, our new Navigator is going to feature our 3.5-liter uh, V6 twin turbocharged engine, and it has 440 horsepower, uh, horsepower and 510 uh, pounds of foot torque. Um, and actually, it's just about timing. This vehicle comes out in early 22 model year, and as we've announced, we do plan to electrify our lineup by the end of the decade. So you'll hear more from us later around electrification and our Navigator. Let's talk about the choice. Um, I mean, Ford has been pretty clear about the um, V6 and, and, and no longer making the big, um, the big V8s, but you can get them from the competitors um, across town. Uh, GM and GMC are offering them. Of course, BMW, Audi, Mercedes all offer um, big four liter and more V8s. Why, why doesn't Ford go back there? Well, I think we've proven over the years with our technology that you don't need to have that big of an engine uh, and you can still get the same capability. You know, the Navigator is a vehicle that tows. Uh, over 30% of our customers actually tow, you know, boats, uh, horse trailers, you know, you name it. So it's very important. And this is a very capable vehicle. And we just don't need that type of uh, uh, power, if you will, to do the job for this uh, vehicle. Right. I mean, well, you get the and same power point, numbers. I mean, yeah, it, exactly. you, you were just giving us the horsepower and torque numbers, and you and you seem to be able to crank them out with the um, EcoBoost or the three and a half um, liter V6. Liter. What kind? What kind of uh, time frame should we be looking at before we get a hybrid um, model of this vehicle, and or before we get a hybrid Lincoln? Well, as you know, we've announced that we are electrifying our lineup, and the whole company announced at Capital Markets Day that we've got a $30 billion investment in electrifying the lineup. So we're looking for going all electric with EVs at Lincoln, and we'll certainly be looking for that capability to have the type of range and power. And we think that's a few years out, not far, but just a little bit. Um, and we'll certainly be looking to um, announce more about our plans about that later. You know, I... Um Love the hybrid power trains, but I always would prefer to have a gasoline engine just as a range extender if possible. When you, when you give the 2030 date, and a lot of automakers are saying we're going to electrify our fleet by 2030, does that mean no more internal combustion engines, or does that mean uh, just that we're going to have an electric choice for each model? Great question. Uh, for Lincoln, it's going to be a transition over time. So we'll debut our first all-electric vehicle next year, which actually matches up with our 100th anniversary. And then we expect by 2026, that'll be the inflection point when about 50% of our volume will be electrified. And then when we say by 2030, the whole lineup will be electrified, we think the majority of our volume, like 70 to 80% of the volume, will be electric. But we'll still have some of those ICE vehicles that are running out as well. We are shifting our investment, though, from ICE to electrification over this time frame, hence the, the big numbers you're hearing about our investments. I'm just configuring, by the way, my uh, Lincoln Navigator here on the internet, and the standard model looks fine. I'm sure the reserve is a step up. I've chosen the black label, obviously. It starts at 98.6, which I would guess is higher than your, your average sales price um, for these units. What kind of margins are you making on this big behemoth and, and how important is it to your profitability? Well, we're certainly pleased with the receptivity of that black label that you're talking about from our clients. And, and it is, as you as you referenced, uh, one of our higher priced uh, vehicle lines. And we actually have a really younger customer with a high household income that's uh, really looking to enjoy that type of vehicle. So I won't discuss uh, margins or profitability 
profitability with you today, but clearly this is a very important vehicle to the Lincoln lineup. And while you're in there configuring that vehicle, you should see that we're gonna have two new exclusive themes for next year, Central Park and also Invitation. And Central Park is absolutely beautiful. Uh, as you can imagine, it's got a Manhattan green exterior cover, uh, color for the outside. And in the interior, we have this beautiful etching on the wood, which kind of has the, the landscape or the scenic pathways of the park. And then also a two-tone uh, color interior that has some perforation in it as well with the design in it. And then Invitation is really uh, going to be a, an all-black interior with some beautiful kai wood in it as well. Joy, uh, um, you know, the chip shortage has made headlines for months now, and we all know that not only the supply chain has issues, but shipping is difficult. Um, when do you see that, uh, when do you see that getting resolved, those issues? Is it in the beginning of 2022? Does it maybe um, take until the end of next year? Well, Matt, it's a very uh, fluid issue, obviously, with the, the chip situation. We are seeing improvement in the second half of the year. And, and we do think we'll probably be into at least mid-22 until we start to see supplies rebound at, at more of a normalized level. But it is very fluid. Uh, we get you know new information every day on this. And we look forward to getting back to full supply where we, so we can fulfill the orders. We've actually had a lot of orders taken for our vehicles based on this lower supply. And we're up actually two times our normal order bank year over year for Lincoln. So we'll look forward to getting back to a little bit more normal in the chip situation soon.